A sudden loud explosion in the air, well, it can be familiar, yet worrying event. And yesterday afternoon, many of us here in central Israel, we suddenly looked around at each other as some heavy yet distant booms broke the afternoon quiet. This time, though, it turned out to be a meteor breaking up in the atmosphere as it traveled northeast over our skies. It was unusually bright and loud, I can attest. He's really... Astronomical Association said it received reports of that meteor being visible for, well, several seconds, despite the loud noise that it made. Now we're joined by Chagai Peretz, professor of physics and uh, astrophysics at the Technion, joining us from Haifa. So thanks for being with us. Look, uh, I think everyone's minds are at least top of mind for Israelis hearing exploding ordnance or what sounds like that in the background. It's rockets, maybe earthquakes on our minds as well. But this, I'd argue, was not on the radar for most people. Look, how unusual is it for a meteor to make such loud noise, first first off, and why this time? So it's both unusual and usual in the sense that we have meteorites coming on into Earth and Earth's atmosphere like every day. If you go out at night, you can see a few of those every night. But these are very small ones like small particles just burn in the atmosphere. But bigger ones, this was a bigger one, sometimes called bolide, they, they are much more brighter. Usually they are related, it's related to them being much larger. When they are much larger, they produce uh, you know, much more burning and also kind of uh, pressure pressurize the atmosphere as they go by. And of course they produce these very large booms, basically a supersonic, um, as they go supersonic like in some sense, like airplanes, right? You go supersonic and you hear the supersonic uh, um, sound. So this is the same thing in, in a sense. As they come from outer space, they go through the atmosphere very, very fast, much faster than the speed of sound. And then they can produce these booms again, if they are big enough. So how rare they are, usually have probably one or two maybe uh, a year, something like that, that you can see from Israel, of course. Uh, of course, uh, the whole world, you have many more. They are relatively rare in that sense okay. compared to this. Yeah. As I said, you were a few per hour that you might see at night. Um, and bigger ones are even more rare. Probably heard about those uh, we've seen in Russia a yeah. few years yeah. back that it's actually very bright, almost like yeah. an atomic bomb. Right. Sorry. Yeah, very bright. I don't, I don't know if there was any bright flash associated with this. I mean, it was in the, the afternoon daylight, but, you know, my own young son, you know, being exposed to the realities around here, you know, heard about this. I explained it was a meteor, you know, the loud boom, and he said, well, you know, how are we protected from this? You know, alluding to Israel's Iron Dome defenses. Well, how do we protect against meteors? I tried to explain the Earth protects us from this here. I mean, was this essentially the noise? Is this meteor breaking up in the atmosphere by our, our Earth shield, essentially? So it's not really, it is breaking up, but the sound is not, it's breaking up. It's really about uh, as it goes very fast through the atmosphere, kind of condensing, produces a sound, again, like a, a supersonic uh, airplane. So that's the main sound of it. But of course, it needs to be big enough to hit also the atmosphere as it goes in and produce this kind of a very big sound. By the way, I'm not sure Iron Dome could have <laughs> no. done, done anything. Caught up with it's it. probably no. much, much faster than the regular rocket. <laughs> sure, we, in any case. Look, uh, what about risk? Well, this, what about a safety risk? Yeah, I mean, is there risk from debris or, you know, where does that come in? So not really. Even these ones, which are pretty rare, they won't even get to the ground. So they will burn completely in the atmosphere. They won't even get to the ground or very, very small particles. So in that sense, it's, they are not very dangerous. Of course, bigger ones can be much more dangerous. Uh, but again, these are extremely rare. These ones, which are pretty rare, are not a dangerous at all, and the vast majority, the really vast, vast majority, would never hit the Earth itself. They just burn in the atmosphere, would never get to hit anything. Of course, sometimes they do, and then you can actually also collect the remnants that you have, and when they hit, that, that it could be very dangerous. But yeah. just remember that, remember that the Earth is very, very big. Oh, yes, so the vast majority of these just go through the oceans and do any, nothing, even when they do hit the, the ground. We know, we know the airspace in Israel, at least, very highly protected, or at least patrolled, watched. You know, does the defense establishment here, do they have advanced warnings for these type of events? Do we know that's coming at some level? Does it matter? For very, very small ones like this, no, they won't have any protection or anything. If they're a bit bigger, or really, I mean, the ones that are really endangering theirs, you might actually see them through the telescopes and there are special surveys. By the way, in Israel too, but mostly through the US and NASA, they actually survey the sky looking for uh, asteroids or meteorites that can actually uh, do any harm uh, to Earth and really uh, do are dangerous. Important those are, those are uh, try to, people do try to locate them and if they found that they're potentially hazardous, 
they might do something. We have, <laughs> the U.S. have some plans of trying so, to. Seen a few things. movies about that. Yeah, we'll see. Yeah, we'll exactly. see where that goes when it comes. These kind of things. We I'm got not parents. sure we're good enough in that sense. But <laughs> okay. There was a recent mission. We'll stay you tuned. You might saw that kind of move the yeah, asteroid right. just a bit. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of a start of something that you might do for something which is much more dangerous than this. We did. I know there was that successful uh, mission to change the trajectory of an asteroid recently. So, hey, Chagai Peretz, thanks for helping us understand what took place yesterday. A lot of us heard it, wanted to make sure we understood a bit more about it. So thanks for joining.